Time to go. seem to be pretty ancient, all right. Let's go in and have a look. Just be careful. Time to go. Yeah. One with nature. Yeah. As one with wind and cloud. Busted. Here comes the catch. Out of my way. Stand with me. also been contaminated by primordial seawater. Yeah. And a lot of it, too. A Fontanian would most likely dissolve the moment they fell in. Right! You can't go down if there's primordial seawater. It's too dangerous, and it won't be any help for you to just stay here. Uh, don't get by my wrong. We're not saying you're useless. It's just that... No, you're right. I can't do anything in this situation. I'll leave this to you. That complicates things. Maybe the only way left is forward. In that case, do you want to wait for us here? <sighs> the water levels here are unstable, and there's a chance the water will rise. So staying here wouldn't be safe either. I'll go together with you. Perhaps we'll find the exit just up ahead. All right. Come with us for now, then. But please be careful. Oh, no. It's a dead end. Let's try climbing over from the side. Time to go.
Demoiselle. Huh? Demoiselle, what are you doing here by yourself? Would you be standing here till dark if I hadn't come to get you? Maybe she just wants some time to herself, Malus. Hmm? Oh. Uh, was I... Was I sleeping? Yes, it would appear so. Uh, I must be tired. That's quite possible. However, you were the one that suggested we go out for a walk. Oh, right. I nearly forgot. <sighs> it must have slipped my mind when I dozed off. I haven't had a nap today yet. Uh, have I? This is a familiar feeling, yet something's a little strange. Is something the matter, demoiselle? Oh, uh, no. No, I'm fine. I was just trying to recall why we came out for a walk. Do you remember Mr. Giverny? He'd requested our help before with foreign merchants who had a debt dispute with him, and we'd resolved the matter not long ago. We were headed to see how things were going with him at the moment. Ah, oh, right. Yes. I remember now. Oh? Miss Navia? Ah, uh, Mr. Malus. And Mr. Silver, too. <laughs> it's good to see all of you. Uh, how have you been? I've been great. Thanks to your help, those bothersome merchants finally realized that I wasn't the one they were looking for. Why, I wasn't even the guarantor for that person. They were knocking at my door day and night. Even my neighbor, Obuna, was getting fed up with them. Sometimes, force is required to calm someone down and get them to listen to what you have to say. <laughs> That's right. Oh, by the way, Burnett, what was it that you wanted to give to Miss Navia again? Oh, oh yes. One moment, I have it right here. Miss Navia, these are some flower seeds that I prepared. Please take them. They're a very good variety, and they'll become very big and beautiful once they bloom. I don't know what we would have done without your help, so this is a little token of our appreciation. I hope you won't refuse. Ah, did you cultivate them yourself? Thank you so much. I'll certainly take them. Baloos, we do still have some empty flower pots at home, right? Why, we can have as many pots as you'd like, demoiselle. Perfect. In that case, we'll swap out some of the decorative plants for some of Mrs. Burnett's flowers. Very well. Wait, something seems to be off here. Excuse me, madam. If I'm not mistaken, your name is Burnett, correct? That's right. Is something wrong? Ah, uh, no, it's nothing. This is the first time we've ever met, but your name seemed familiar to me. I must have heard it when I was discussing things with your husband previously. I've heard this name before. Sometime recently, I'm sure of it. And why are there so few people around here? Where did everyone go? We must mind the time, demoiselle. We still have important things to attend to today. Huh? Uh, we do? Like what? Well, now, did you forget? Miss Navia, here you are! I've been looking for you. Please, come to the Opera House. Your trial is about to begin. My trial? Wait, w why would I need to go to the Opera House? Yes, she's right, Demoiselle. It's just about time now, so we should get going. Oh? Uh, all right, then. <laughs> Look, it's Navia! She's here! And her two attendants are with her! <sighs> Goodness, everyone's finally here. There sure are a lot of people here to see the trial. And they all seem to be oddly... excited about something. I even know some of these people. Karina. Desiree. Joyville. Julian, Essen. Why are so many people here? And why do I have no recollection of this case? And as for the judge... Uh, huh? Where's Monsieur Nervillette? Please sit in the defendant's seat. Don't worry, Silver and I shall accompany you. All right. But are you sure you can stand behind me? Typically, it wouldn't be allowed, but today is an exception. 
Hey, what kind of place do they think this is? Come on, do they have any idea what they're doing? Seriously. <sighs> Enough with the whispering! <sighs> Could someone please tell me where Monsieur Nervillette is? And why I'm standing trial? My dear Miss Navia, have you not yet realized what you've done? In that case, allow me to explain. As all here know, you are Master Callus's successor, the head of the Spina di Rasula, someone held in high regard by every soul in Poisson. After you took over the Spina, you treated all of us just like the late Master Callus had. If anyone in need reached out to you for help, you responded. Not only you, but your butler, your subordinates, Nearly everyone in the Spina di Rasula fought for the well-being of those in Poisson. <laughs> Wait a moment. Aren't you just proving that I'm a good person? Yes, correct. Absolutely right. And that is why you stand accused. You have helped so many people get through so many difficulties. You are one with us. We are inseparable. We are one big family, all of us who are from Poisson, inextricably linked. And with you being so important, we couldn't possibly do without you. Therefore, this fair and honorable court shall declare you guilty, and you shall stay here. You will be together with us forever. Huh? What are you saying? Uh... Everything you have said is correct. I have indeed done a lot for my hometown, and I would be willing to be with you all, but what is the purpose of having me stand here like this? What is there to discuss? Oh, well, if that's what you think, then I have no further comments. <gasps> How wonderful, Miss Navia! <laughs> <laughs> I know all these people. Why are they laughing? I seem to remember now. Yes, I get it. This trial is... Wait just a moment. This isn't right! Uh, Malus? What was that, Mr. Malus? Our conclusion is very clear and unanimous. Let the court judge her now. She's guilty! Stay here, Navia! You're one of us! Demoiselle, don't admit guilt. This trial means to keep you here forever. I wish to exercise my right to defend Our Lady. Mr. Swanfield, you only know of Navia's goodness, but nothing of her utterly independent mind. She was born a free and independent spirit. She has never been tied down by anything. Indeed, even the death of Master Callus couldn't stop her. Her actions cannot serve as proof that she identifies herself as part of any group. She merely acted as an individual, extending her hand to help others. Please do not mistake her actions as being otherwise. Really? As an individual, you say? Don't forget, we are all Fontanians here. This is the nation of justice, the nation of Hydro! Even if Miss Navia only voluntarily rendered her assistance, that doesn't change the fact that her beautiful soul must return to everyone. Water accepts all, blends with all. It will surely accept her kindness. Everything is measured here in the nation of Hydro, and in the end, everyone shall meld together. Thus, when a unanimous opinion emerges, that opinion represents justice. Now, I speak for everyone. Our opinion is consistent. Navia should stay. We and Navia are one. And you would call this justice? Preposterous. You are merely jealous that Demoiselle still has a chance to exist as an individual. Have you forgotten how much you all once longed to become individuals? To become independent? Do you need to defy our justice? If your justice is flawed, then why should we acknowledge it? As you said, we can also have our own justice. Silver and I shall defend Demoiselle. And that is how we will enforce justice. Ugh, my head... It hurts. Demoiselle. 
Silver, it hurts. My head is spinning. All I can see is stars swirling in front of me. I remember now. Everything that seemed odd from the very beginning. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien, Essen, and Mr. Giverny and Mrs. Burnett, who we met earlier. Even Malus and Silver. I don't want to admit it, but... But they're all dead. Don't be afraid, and don't admit guilt. We will protect you to the very end. Absurd! Who are you to say that she cannot be judged? We are the majority, and in the nation of trials, the majority is absolute justice. We are the will of all. Don't let them escape! We shall keep Navia here with us! Mr. Malus and Mr. Silver, must you be so stubborn? How could the two of you possibly hope to stand against the Collective? Do not resist. This judgment is fair and just. Navia belongs to us. After all that happened, she should not be left alone in Poisson. What are you saying? No more excuses. She says we're jealous. Jealous? <laughs> How could she possibly be an independent individual? What's with these people? Who's jealous of her? She belongs to us! Miss... Navia... She... Silence! Uh, that's... Uh, Monsieur Nervillette! Such commotion is prohibited in the court. The accusations you just presented are nonsense and cannot constitute a proper trial. The court will adjourn for the rest of the day. In this, I shall hear no objections from any unauthorized party. Our thanks, Monsieur Nervillette. Please leave with me, Miss Navia, while there is still time. But... Go on now, demoiselle. This is your only chance to leave this place. What, can't bear to leave us behind or something? Malus. <laughs> My apologies. I couldn't resist making one little joke once I realized that this shall be our last goodbye. Malus. Silver. Quickly, you must come now. Goodbye, demoiselle. Farewell. Just a second! Uh, Navia? <laughs> You're awake. Good. <sighs> I must have been dreaming. Malus and Silver were still alive, and they were... They were defending me at some insane trial. It looks like you're alright. Did all the sad feelings cause you to have a nightmare? Baimon could give you a hug. The ruins you were exploring suffered a cave-in. When I arrived, I found you falling toward the water. You were just about to be dissolved within, but I... Hmm... Hmm? What is it? I think I saw two Oceanids protecting you. It was only for a moment, perhaps even a fraction of a second, but they gave me the chance to retrieve you. Were it not for their intervention, I would not have been able to rescue you before your consciousness dissipated. Did you say Oceanids? You mean like what happened with Vache? Perhaps those two Oceanids were the people you saw in your dream. <sighs> I always told them that they didn't have to protect me. <sighs> to think that they'd keep doing so even after death. <sighs> Please come with me. Nevelet, are you okay? Hmm? Oh, I am quite all right. Perhaps there's something we could chat about? Why do you look so stiff all of a sudden? Oh, Paimon knows. You're the type who feels awkward when there's nothing to talk about, right? I merely thought that we should give Navia some time to herself. Huh? Why didn't you just say so then? Don't you think it's even more awkward to call us over like this and then have nothing to talk about? Hmm. I suppose so. Ah, Sijuin. I hope all is well with her these days. Her work in the Fortress of Meropede has not been too much for her, has it? No way! Don't worry. 
She's doing fine down there. She's an amazing head nurse. I see. Well, that is good. I have always worried that Sijuin would need a lot of time to understand the world of humanity, just as I have. Oh, and the Duke also says hi. Even though Sijuin made him do that, he hopes that you haven't been overwhelmed by all that's happened lately. Thank you. I have indeed been busy lately, and I also hope that everything is going well in the Fortress of Meripede. Uh, he still doesn't know what to talk about. Uh, let's chat about something else then. Oh, Nevelet, uh, you're probably quite the swimmer, huh? Mm hmm Yes, of course. Uh, this isn't going anywhere. Uh, let's try something else. Um, how did you find these ruins? Did the knave tell you? Yes, in fact. I had arranged to meet you in Poisson, but when I arrived, I discovered that the Fatui were helping the residents evacuate. They had even transported a large quantity of supplies to the area. Amid my astonishment, I ran into the nave, and we had a chat. She informed me that she had asked you to investigate the ancient ruins here. Yeah, we originally planned to meet up with you, but we thought you might still be busy with all those official documents. We didn't think exploring the ruins would take very long, and who would have thought you'd wrap things up so quickly? <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry to have kept you all waiting like that. I'm feeling much better now. I guess we should get going again. Will you come with us, Monsieur Nervillette? Yes, if you wouldn't mind my company. With nature, yeah. fallen leaves adorn my. Our bond is strong. Time for retribution. Come. Quiet now. You were about to get.
looks like we've reached the end. This is the place. There should not be any other hidden spaces in the vicinity. The path sure had some twists and turns, but it turns out that this place isn't actually that big. Stone slates? It seems like they were put here as an offering. Uh, could we take them down and have a look? Uh, perhaps we should just leave them be for now. Hmm. There are four locations in total, but only three stone slates. The slate that should be in the first empty spot is missing. And the surrounding walls also show signs of damage. There's something written below. Let Paimon see. Uh, reason dictates that this nation be destroyed. I shall record the history of its future here in its past. Uh... Say what? It feels like someone left these slates and these words here for a purpose. But does he mean that Fontaine should be destroyed? That would fit the circumstances dictated by the prophecy, yes. Indeed, the slate's contents correspond to it. Take the second slate, for example. There's a person kneeling here. She seems so... dedicated. And there's a whole bunch of other people behind her doing the same. She's facing this... Uh... What is this? Some kind of island in the sky? And... Is that... Lady Farina in the third image? Did the Hydro Archon fall into the water? And... Is that a ring of people around her? Paimon doesn't quite get it. Are they all in the water? The fourth image... I know this one. This exactly matches the content of the prophecy. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Hmm. More information should be hidden in these slates, but I fear I cannot easily uncover it, most likely due to us missing the first slate. I am very sorry. Don't blame yourself, Monsieur Nervalet. Deciphering ancient stone slates isn't one of your duties. Ooh, Paimon's getting the chills just looking at these slates. This says that it's the history of the future, right? That means the prophecy's sure to come true. Uh, I really hope it doesn't mean that. Still... Paimon feels like these images are kind of weird when you look at them together. Huh. Hmm. That's right! If the images are in chronological order, shouldn't the fourth, the waters drowning Fontaine, come before the third? Where the Hydro Archon herself falls into the water? And yet the order is reversed here. If we go by timing, Lady Farina only emerges in the third image. That means that the person in the second image might be the previous Hydro Archon. Egeria, then. I had never met her, but her appearance here does match the records. The previous Archon kneeling before the floating island in the skies, as if confessing a sin. Did she herself commit that sin? And if not, why would she be in such a posture? Also, I'm still wondering why these ancient stone slates are here at all. Judging from their contents, could this place be the origin of the prophecy? <laughs> Does that mean that someone, or some people, once saw these slates? But who would have created these slates and left these words here? Hmm. It seems that any further clues will have to come from Farina. In that case, there's no time to lose. There's nothing else to be gained here, so let's head back first. Yeah, we better get somewhere safe for now.
Let's split up here. I'm going to check on what's happening with the Spina. You know how it is. There's some things you just need to be there for yourself. You still have energy for that, Navia? Paimon's already beat! <sighs> just head back to the Fluvsandra and have a rest then. Thanks for keeping me company all this time. I'll depart as well. Thanks for your hard work today. Rest well, everyone. Traveler, I will go talk to Farina tomorrow morning to ask about the stone slates. I'm sure that you're concerned about this matter as well. If you have time, drop by my office. I will share the results of our discussion with you. Are you really gonna talk to her about this directly? Will that be a problem? Ugh, Paimon's getting a little scared now that it's come to this. She has long been harboring secrets and will not give them up easily. Which makes it all the more my duty to ensure that she understands the present situation. Alright, we'll leave it in your hands then. You're probably the best person to talk to her anyway. I will be carefully considering my words tonight. Traveler, Paimon, our safe house at the Fluvsandra is always open to you as ever. So please don't think you're an imposition. <sighs> Alright, I'll be on my way then. Welcome back. We've got a special menu prepared for you two tonight. Yay! And there's good food too! Navi- uh, no, the boss is the best! <laughs> Ooh, desserts! Nice, these are all Paimons! <sighs> Paimons already starting to forget what happened today. Oh, that voice. Is that who I think it is? Huh? It's you two. What are you doing in Fontaine? Mona? Seriously, nobody just uses a scry glass whenever they've got time to just see who they'll meet on the road. Still, we didn't expect to see you here. Uh, wait, you're not a Fontanian, are you, Mona? Well, I have some business to attend to here, so I booked a hotel in the city. I was just out for a stroll when I bumped into you. Quite unexpectedly, if I might add. Why did you think I was from Fontaine, though? Is that because Magistus doesn't sound much like a Mondstadter surname? Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Well, I used to have my own surname, which was... Well, some other thing. Either way, the old hag told me when she took me as her disciple that the first step to being a great astrologist's pupil was to change that name. There was nothing for it, really. She really is amazing at astrology, so I changed my name to what it is now according to her wishes. To my surprise, however, Magistus is not the name of some ancient house or clan. Uh, it isn't? Nope. Although it is used by us in place of surnames, it generally just means great. Wow! Imagine including a boast in your name. Wait, are you going to have to put that into your genealogy as well? I reckon so. In any case, I'd give my disciple a name like this as well, if I were to take one. Astromancer Barbaloth Trismegistus. Whoa, that's a long one. Does it also mean great or something? My name means Mona the Great Astrologist. As for the old hag, hers is, in plain speech, the Thrice as Great Scholar of the Stars. Just take it as a title specific to astrologists. Thrice as Great? That's so... petty. I know, right? <sighs> That's just how she is. She used to call herself Magistus, actually, but when she took me in, she changed her name to Trismagistus. Talk about excessive. Magistus is thus the calling card of our school, so to speak, which makes it about the same as a surname. It's all right if you don't get it. You can look into it further should you need to study astrology more deeply. That sounds terrible! Ugh. But anyway, you're not Fontanian, are you, Mona? You're from Mondstadt, right? Well, I was born in Mondstadt, yes. My parents migrated to Dorman Port, and I traveled with the old hag for a while, after which I settled down in Mondstadt City. Oh, that's a good thing then. 
At least we know you won't be dissolved by Fontaine's waters. Hmm, speaking of that, I'm sure you're aware that a bunch of things have happened here in Fontaine, right? I know you're not a local, but I'd avoid getting too close to any water that looks strange all the same. There's something ominous about it. Well, the water, I mean. That was the main reason, yes. Just a while back, the Steambird invited me to take part in a panel and speak about the circulation of the prophecy as an astrologist. The invitation was sent quite early on. I don't think anyone expected Fontaine to be in this much trouble. What do you make of that prophecy, Mona? Just tell us what you think as an astrologist. Your word would go a long way to make things more certain and less... scary. What I can tell you is that I'm an astrologist. And that this prophecy concerns the fate of Fontaine, even that of Altevat. Ascertaining this is akin to reading the fortune of the whole world. I'm afraid that this is not something that just anyone can do. If I could do it, you would no longer call me an astrologist, but a visionary. But on the flip side, the prophecy is so huge and powerful that it must surely come from a powerful visionary. Its contents involve the fate of the world. Disregarding it would be a mistake. A visionary? Sounds really powerful and all, but does such a person really exist? Of course. The old hag could do it. And I'd bet there are others amongst those Hex and Zirkle colleagues of hers who could do something similar. Huh? Uh, are you sure? Hmm... Alright, I'll help you. It isn't often that I see you with such a serious look on your face. I'll tell you once I hear back from her. Thanks, Mona! You're amazing as always! Oh, well, this is something only I can do after all. So yes, your praises are quite welcome. That's the greatest of astrologists for you! Of all the people we know, you know the stars the best! Indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's the spirit. Oh, sorry. I came to see what all the commotion was about. If there's anything you need, do not hesitate to inform the Spina di Rosula. Oh, whoops, <laughs> guess we were getting a little too carried away there. Well, I'll go tend to my own business now. If I receive any news, I'll be sure to come find you two again. And there she goes, quick as rushing water. And here we are with the Spina guy giving us suspicious looks. <sighs> if Paimon hadn't spoken for you, it'd be you getting all the weird looks. <laughs> the things Paimon does for you. Hmm, <laughs> that's more like it. Still feeling kind of sleepy. <sighs> but it's 